Hello to everyone. My name is Professor Michael Lewis. I'm with Nazarbayev University, and I'm here today to tell you a little bit about our School of Engineering and Digital Sciences. Now, you may know that Nazarbayev University was established as the premier research university for the Republic of Kazakhstan, and that the programs that we run in engineering and digital sciences were created in collaboration with experts from leading universities around the world including University College London and Carnegie Mellon University. Now, I'll take these next 10 minutes to tell you a little bit about our school and about our degree programs, and then to talk about our majors and the laboratory facilities that we have here. And I'll conclude with contact information so that those of you who'd like to go further are welcome to do so through any of the channels provided. Now, you'll notice at the top our logo smart engineering applied intelligence. This takes into account the growing system of autonomous systems, smart systems, artificial intelligence that permeates all of our disciplines. Uh, in fact, we reorganized two years ago to create the School of Engineering and Digital Sciences by combining our School of Science and Technology and our School of Engineering. It might be interesting for you to know that MIT did something similar and reorganized around, as an organizing principle, artificial intelligence and data science. Our changes were occurring in parallel with those of MIT, I think driven by many of the same factors. Now, we undertook this transformation in order to create synergies across all academic disciplines and departments, so that we recognized that the need for computational devices, computational technologies, and all the related analytics, including machine learning and artificial intelligence, that these could be useful tools in nearly every discipline. So by doing this, this transformation, by creating a new school, we are positioning our university and our school at the forefront in terms of the integration of digital technologies in engineering, the arts, and the sciences. Now, just briefly, I want to emphasize in our presentation that our programs are aligned with the disciplinary professional societies and the accreditation agencies. Uh, and we have, again, modern programs and modern laboratories. In fact, very likely the best in the region. Our school has more than 100 faculty members, all research active, all of them domain experts. Uh, nearly everyone has a PhD from some of the world's leading universities and our faculty are extraordinarily diverse and international, altogether coming from perhaps more than 50 countries, bringing that extensive global experience to bear on our programs. Currently, we have more than 2,000 students in our school. It's growing rapidly. Uh, more than 1,700 Bachelor of Engineering or Bachelor of Science degrees. We offer both degrees depending on the degree program, and we'll describe that shortly. We also have a very rapidly growing graduate program for both master's degrees and for doctoral degrees. In terms of the departments, you'll see that we have six major undergraduate uh, departments, which offer a total of six undergraduate bachelor's degrees, nine master's program degrees, and one general doctorate that covers all of our degree programs. You'll, you'll notice here the presence of both computer science and robotics. These are a legacy of our involvement with Carnegie Mellon University in the beginning, whereas our engineering programs were all derived from the guidance provided by University College London. Now, the bachelor degrees correspond very closely to those departments and those department structures. Each department has its own dedicated faculty, its own dedicated laboratories, and then many collaborative exchanges with the other departments where it's appropriate to do so. I'll now take just a couple of minutes to talk about the programs themselves. We offer a Bachelor of Engineering in Chemical and Materials Engineering, and you can see a little bit about the nature of this program. In particular, I want to emphasize the extensive laboratory facilities. This is something very important for our students because our work isn't just theoretical or textbook based. We believe in hands-on learning. 
We believe in uh, research-inspired learning, such that our students are working in the laboratories from their earliest days, and they're able to become involved in our research programs uh, as well from perhaps their second or even third year in the program. By the fourth year in any of our programs, uh, students will be working on capstone projects. These projects are year-long projects that rely heavily on the combination of the undergraduate teaching laboratories and our research laboratories. Now I mentioned the Bachelor of Engineering in Civil and Environmental Engineering. There's a great deal of interest in the civil engineering due to the unusual uh, nature of Kazakhstan, uh, the diverse geography and the unusual character of the land. So that building in say Nur Sultan or building in Shimkent or building in Almata would have very different characteristics and our students need to be aware of what would be involved here. So whether it's uh, tall buildings, wide buildings, deep buildings, or related to our transportation infrastructure, or these days very important, our water resource systems, all of it is uh, relevant for these students. You can see at the bottom some of the specializations that we have, and then to the left, more about the dedicated laboratories. Now, our Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, it won't surprise you to know that this program is one of the largest in the school, in fact, one of the largest in the university. The uh, emphasis in Kazakhstan on digitalization and the outcomes of the Digital Kazakhstan Initiatives have created a great deal of interest among students and their families for students to become very technically oriented for their uh, careers. And I can assure you this program is quite comprehensive with uh, one of the largest concentrations of faculty, one of the widest areas and portfolios of research. And it's both within computer science and our faculty work with uh, researchers throughout virtually every discipline in the university. So the collaboration prospects here are remarkable. We have groups of experts in AI, in wireless sensor networks, mobile computing, cybersecurity. It's really quite extensive. I can't capture it all here, but of course we encourage you for all of these degree programs to visit our online resources. In addition and related overlapping, we have a Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical and Computer Engineering. So where the computer science might emphasize more the soft side of the systems, software and uh, devices working with protocols, the computer engineering focus much more on those devices, on the engineering of the devices. So this is uh, on the continuum of computational devices, it's on the device end. And again, extensive laboratories, on the left, we have selected pictures from some of the labs. Uh, it's a comprehensive immersion for our students in the development, the design, and the construction of these devices. I mentioned as well our Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. This is becoming extremely popular amongst our students because it overlaps again with several other disciplines of computer science, of robotics, in general engineering across many disciplines. So this is really a synthesis of uh, skills in many fields. And again, this is indicated, you can see by some of the representative laboratories listed on the left. I mentioned our Bachelor of Science in Robotics and Mechatronics. It's one of our most research active programs in the university, very specialized. It's the most integrated, I would say, in terms of all of the engineering disciplines, because here you need math, you need physics, you need engineering, you need computer science, uh, all of this brought together, because we talk about not only the robotic devices, but we talk about the degree of decision making inherent in these devices. So when we think about autonomous uh, decision making robotic systems, well, this is an important idea. We're really talking about uh, devices that can begin to take decisions based upon the inputs and the environment around them and the guidance they've received from humans. This is an extraordinarily rich and diverse field. And in fact, the strength of NU in all of the related disciplines cre uh, allowed us to establish uh, our best research institute in the country devoted to smart systems and artificial intelligence. 
The Institute for Smart Systems and Artificial Intelligence, known as ASAI, ASAI was launched just over a year ago and has already published breakthrough research in several areas in modeling and simulation of the pandemic, for example, and the impact on Kazakhstan. And more recently, they have published the largest collection of spoken Kazakh uh, in a digital format in the world in order to support applications and support for Kazakh for online interactions or interactions with robotic devices. This group is uh, one of the most uh, competitive in the university with uh, perhaps 40 or more young Kazakh researchers and students working on projects. Now, often the students and their parents ask about study and research opportunities. So I want to share this with you. We are actively engaged with a number of academic mobility programs throughout Europe, America, and Asia. So students on a regular basis, typically in their third year of study, can take a semester in another university. And of course, it integrates with our own programs. Uh, they can also do this in the context of summer programs, whether uh, here or abroad, they can do a version of mobility. We also support actively internships for all of our students. It's part of this idea, this theme of hands-on learning. These internships can be taken within Kazakhstan or outside, and enormous numbers of our students are able to organize these through our Career and Advising Center, uh, which also supports uh, work and in internships. Uh, this is a very active activity for our students. I mentioned earlier the research prospects. Students begin in typically their third and fourth years, uh, and if this research results in a publication, then we support that student traveling to the conference where that publication would be presented. And they're able to participate in that conference and present their work. Dozens of students every year are able to participate in this activity. Uh, and of course, we have the typical situation with Olympiad competitions and a number of summer school programs, again, here and abroad, that allow our students uh, to take advantage of these opportunities. Now, these are just a few anecdotes. I won't read them all, but our students have done well. Uh, our graduates go on to very strong programs in other universities for master's and PhD programs. So both within our own university, throughout Europe, Asia, and the US, I'll show you a selection in just a moment. We have a number of uh, active projects, and these are manifestations of these student activities. The list of such activities would be hundreds long. We mentioned several here. There are more featured on the website. Uh, the parents often ask, what about our students? Where do they go? So often the anecdotes or the narratives from the students are very useful in this regard. Here we have Mahdi who went off to Dubai to work in some innovation and startup opportunities in Dubai. We have a group of our students who, can, who are already pursuing their PhD programs in the US. So this group is uh, each of them active in that regard. A high percentage of our students go on for graduate studies because our programs are designed to provide that kind of comprehensive background. Also, I mentioned Galia here. It might be interesting for you to know that our programs have a very high percentage of female students. Unlike those of America or Europe, uh, the number of women involved in math and science, technology and engineering, it's tremendous, really high percentage in our school, perhaps 40 or 45 percent. And some of the highest achievements have been done by our female students. Now, I mentioned this. Where do our graduates go? Well, some of the top companies in the world whether they work here in Kazakhstan with branches of these companies or whether they work internationally or they travel on their behalf. This is a representative sample, but again, only part of the picture. I mentioned as well the universities where our students go for their master's or PhD work. Again, this is just a representative sample, but these are some of the top universities in the world. Our students are competitive. They're trained well and they compete in these venues. It wouldn't surprise you and they succeed there. So I hope this has been interesting for you today to learn a little bit about our school. 
uh, of engineering and digital sciences, a little bit about our departments and our programs, uh, a little bit about our facilities, and maybe some